good, y'all. It's your boy Ross back here again with another video. So, we're going to check out 10 best ways wrestlers responded to crowd signs. Now, if you know anything about wrestling, you know one of the biggest appeals to wrestling is bringing in your own sign that you create at home to bring to the show, whether to support someone or whether to troll someone. And that's where it's always been in wrestling if you guys remember back in the attitude era all you saw was a sea full of signs everywhere and this is kind of what it is what's what wrestling culture it's all about now of course over the years they've toned down on it you can't really just bring in crazy signs like you used to back in the day and a lot of times you don't really see as many signs as you used to but there are some moments where people are able to sneak in a sign and it may try they may try to trigger a wrestler or piss them off troll them so we're gonna check out this video basically seeing how the wrestlers responded to these probably unsavory signs so appreciate all the love and support road to 60k but before we get started into this video, I got a special announcement for you guys. Yo, have you guys heard of a free-to-play fantasy RPG game on iOS, Android, and PC? Well, if you haven't, then you're missing out. You might as well go ahead and download Raid Shadow Legends right now. Raid Shadow Legends has a whole world of amazing-looking champions all from their own unique factions and those factions have a lot of lore use my links down below to download raid shadow legends on all mobile devices ios and android and pc raid shadow legends also has a jam-packed halloween lineup towards the end of the month we're talking big rewards tournaments against other players special fragment events to get some brand new legendary champions including one very spooky halloween champion and much more can't have a fantasy world without dwarves and raid shadow legends doesn't disappoint one of the later factions added to raid's lineup of over 600 characters that's right 600 characters dwarves have their own rich histories within the world of Teleria. this faction has a lot of variety and design detail they're evil looking ones, nobles, barmaids, sorcerers. It feels like a whole society. One of my favorite dwarven champions is Samar the Gym Curse. One of the aspects that I personally like about the game itself is being able to rank up your character through campaign mode. It's the best way to make sure that your character is, is at its strongest possible form if you want to get a huge head start on raid all you have to do is click the link down below in the description or scan my qr code and if you do that you'll get one epic hero chinaru 200k silver one xp boost one energy refill and one ancient shard so you can summon an awesome champion as soon as you get in the game also the rewards will only be available for the next 30 days and for new players so if you want your chance and opportunity to claim these rewards all you got to do scan the qr code at the bottom of the screen click the link down below in the description make sure you claim these rewards once again thanks to raid shadow legends for sponsoring this video and let's get right back into the reaction All right, y'all. Let's check this out, man, and see what uh, what some wrestlers uh had to deal with with some some of these signs that they saw, and how did they deal with it? As they once were when it comes to the world of wrestling. If you go back to the Attitude Era, all you see is signs. It's like bits of cardboard have taken over the human race, and everybody else is dead. You still do get some really cool ones though, and I always appreciate when people bring an ups and downs sign that absolutely blows my brain. And do not forget, when you write something down on a piece of paper, the wrestlers themselves often see it. My name is Simon Miller, welcome to What Culture Wrestling, and this is the 10 best ways wrestlers reacted to real actual sides. Number 10, Chris Jericho and Hogan is a Jedi. We go all the way back to 2002 with this one, and of course we're talking about Chris Jericho, 
who not only saw this sign of the crowd, but when you know what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna reference it in a promo later. Of course, around about this time is when Star Wars Episode Two: Attack of the Clones came out, and I don't wanna talk about that because I'd like to remain happy today, which meant, <laughs> yes, a bunch of fans were like, oh, I love Star Wars, it's the best thing ever. Why don't I combine it with wrestling? So when Chris Jericho did see this, and given that he was feuding with Hulk Hogan, he said, whoever brought that stupid sign to my show, you are an idiot. How can you call Hulk Hogan a Jedi when basically he's one massive dumpster fire? This fan must have had the time of his life as well because later on when they were having a fight, Hulk Hogan found him and allowed him to slap Chris Jericho right around the face. So I think I can That's give you That's a bunch cool. of good reasons why you should always bring a sign. That's Number dope. Nine, John Cena, and if Cena wins, we riot. One of the best signs in WWE of history course. that ironically came at the ECW One Night Stand event in 2006. This when I saw that sign, I was like, yeah, I actually believe they will, they would have rioted at that time period. Oh, yeah, I, those fans were, whoo, nah, they, they were anti-John Cena to the max, man. This crowd was so amped up for Extreme Championship Wrestling, and they hated John Cena yep. so much, they let their thoughts known with a sign. This, of course, as well, was in response to the fact that we were getting John Cena versus Rob Van Dam for the WWE title, and nobody in this building on this night wanted to see Johnny Boy win. Nope. So they were like, oh my gosh, what if he does? What's a good way to try and push WWE in a corner? We will make... Yep, the infamous, if John Cena wins, we riot. And I believed them. <laughs> I believed them at that time. They was going to destroy that show. I, I just believed it. Obviously, I doubt this would have happened and WWE handled the whole thing perfectly anyway. But go back and watch how John Cena responds and reacts to this. It is absolutely brilliant. He is lapping this up. He loves the fact that he gets to be a pseudo heel on this evening. One of the reasons the event is so damn good. And yeah, sure, it mm -hmm. wasn't just this sign. There was around about 82,000 of them. And everyone was just going, boo, boo, we hate you so much. Honestly, I tell you, this is a great reminder while wrestling rocks. Number eight, Randy Orton and another headlock, Randy. For better or worse, Randy Orton has long been associated <laughs> with wrestling. That's funny. Now, I don't want to be another that guy. headlock, that's Randy. Jeez, that's funny. Sometimes you absolutely need to rest hold. Otherwise, you're going to die. But you know what fans are like. They have big voices and they should always be allowed to voice them. So somebody brought this sign, which was essentially saying, Randy, stop doing the rest holds. This was happening a lot between 2003 and 2004, especially when the Viper was feuding with Rob Van Dam. And because Randy Orton is just, well, he doesn't give a fuck, does he? When he started to see these signs, he would glance funny. at it and go, oh yeah? And he'd walk up to Rob Van Dam. And he'd <laughs> There's actually people who have drinking games about this as well. Anytime Orton does put somebody in one of these holes, you take a drink. Now, I think that, we're kind of missing sounds... the fact that Randy Orton is one of the best wrestlers. <laughs> that sounds about right, man, because he <laughs> love his headlocks, man. <laughs> whatever, whatever, you do you. Number seven, Shawn Michaels and essentially the entirety of Canada. Yeah. We all know the deal between Bret Hart and Shawn Michaels. I'm not going to get into it now because I think it's insulting your intelligence. But yes, throughout 1997, these two dudes were at each other's heads, which culminated in the Survivor Series, and we've mm -hmm. talked about it to death. But both after this and before, because there was this hatred between the heartbreak kid and the hitman, all of Canada, which is where Bret Hart was from, absolutely despised Michaels. To the point, they would bring all of these signs, some of which had messages on them, which I refuse to say right now. And if you were <laughs> one of the people that wrote these things down, what is wrong with you? This is obviously offensive. It didn't mean by the time we got to Montreal, the absolute- Nah, people legitimately, like, legitimately despised Shawn Michaels from this incident. I mean, despised him, hated him with every fiber of their being. So, of course, the signs were going to be uh, <laughs> pretty much with an, wishing death upon the guy. So, The heat on Shawn's shoulders was ridiculous. And even when you sped forward to like 2005 and Shawn Michaels was still winding people up, you could look into the crowd. And that's right, there were signs that said, Shawn screwed Brett. 
which by the way he did. Number mm-hmm. six, Brian Danielson and get a tan, Brian. Brian Danielson is one of the best wrestlers of all time. I 100% mean this. Mm-hmm. And one of the reasons he's so good at it, aside from when he's in the ring, is the connection and the engagement he has with the fans. It's just effortless for him. Facts. We just love him. Back in December 2005 in Ring of Honor, when Brian was competing for the ROH title against Roderick Strong, though, he happened to notice one sign in the crowd that said, Brian Danielson, why don't you get a tan? <laughs> so essentially somebody was saying that he weren't brown enough. One of the reasons you should check this out though is because this person hadn't written this thing on cardboard. They had done it on like a clean and erase board. So Brian Danielson saw it. He walked over to it and thought, well, that's a little bit insulting. So he took his hand and he rubbed the message off. And so this is another <laughs> reason why Danielson is so beloved because he would get in the squared circle and he would whoop somebody's ass and then he would do entertaining things like this. Number five, Daniel Bryan. And yes, this sign is a waste of paper. Happening when Brian Danielson was now Daniel Bryan in WWE mm-hmm. and having that wonderful reign as the Eco Warrior Champion yeah. in 2018. Eco Warrior Heel smart Champion. Some fan thought, well, wait a minute, he wants us to save the world. And here I am scrawling some stuff down on a piece of paper, which I shouldn't be doing. Why don't I direct it at one Daniel Bryan? So this was essentially mocking the fact <laughs> that Bryan was trying to save the world. And when he clocked this as he was walking- Oh my, yes, this sign. Sign wasted paper. <laughs> That's funny. That's actually funny. Yeah. The sign definitely wasted paper, Brian. How do you feel? <laughs> Walking to the ring, my word, his reaction is great. He looks at this individual as if he wants to rip their head off. Yeah. The man is the best baby face, and somehow he is also the best heel. Number four, Triple H and Hey DX. Suck these. <laughs> yeah, we are going back oh, to the wow. era, and I couldn't believe this happened then, and I still can't believe this happened now. But I just like I was saying, man, Attitude Era was a different time, especially when it came to bringing signs and stuff to the shows. Different time. Lady in the crowd during a Monday Night Raw had a sign that said the words that I just had to say. I'm not going to say again because my parents may be watching. So <laughs> Triple H then told her, "Well, why don't you do what the sign says?" Oh, the women whipped up her top and she showed off her breasts. I suppose this interaction between D-Generation X and this fan <laughs> does sum up the period and does sum up the time. Yeah. But look, for one reason or another, when I do watch it, I'm like, man, I hope nobody walks in right now and says, oh, what are you viewing this evening? Because I'm going to look like a really, really, really weird person. Number three, Edge, and Edge has tiger blood. Not every interaction between wrestler and fan is a bad one, and this one was so good, and another reminder about why eventually we were like, oh my gosh, Edge, you're the best person ever, because mm-hmm. <laughs> he could just tell so many stories with his face. But around about one month before he did have to retire, he was making his way to the ring when he saw a sign in the crowd that said, Edge has tiger blood, which was a reference to something that Charlie Sheen had been mm-hmm. talking about at the time, and I don't want to be that guy, but Charlie Sheen may have been high. The best part, though, is that when the real life Adam <laughs> Copeland did clock this, he just broke out into a massive smile, he started <laughs> to laugh, and I remember it back then, and I remember that's, it now because I went and rewatched that's, it. That's, that's funny. <laughs> you, sometimes it's, they, they try to maintain their character, but sometimes fans just do some funny stuff, and that at that time period, it made sense because of the whole... Charlie Sheen, I got tiger blood in me. Edge has tiger blood, man. Edge was, you know, Edge is and was back then uh, definitely one of the, the, the top main event guys. So even though majority of his career at the time he was a heel, people still enjoyed his work, so. Watched it, obviously I do have somewhat of a brain. I was just like, I love seeing things like this. It was real, there was no scripting, and it made you feel all warm and fuzzy down here, dumb dumb. So make sure you go check this one out as well. It's the 11th of March, 2011, Smacker Down. And then yeah, just don't watch any more because within four weeks time, things get really, really sad. Number two, mm-hmm. Jade Cargill and the beer break. This one only happened recently and is a huge reason we decided to do this list. So I'm just going to take my hands and clap them together like a seal for Jade Cargill because my word, does she know how to handle herself. But as she was walking to the ring for an episode of AEW Rampage, where she had a really good triple threat match, she saw some idiot in the crowd lift a sign up that said beer break as if to suggest now that Jade Cargill was going to wrestle, they were going to go to the concession stand. Because Jade he just has this down though as she was walking she clocked this sign she extended her hand and she flipped this guy ah, off gave him the middle like, finger well, that's one nil to Cargill it also tied into her character perfectly because she has been going around saying I'm that bitch 
honestly, Jade Cargill is going to be such a superstar in a few years, it ain't going to be funny. When she does get there, somebody better cast her as Storm in an X-Men movie too, otherwise I'm going to be upset. I can, one, see her. <laughs> I can see her being Storm. She has the physique too. So, yeah, that's I that was a nice response. Die. Now, we all remember this if we were watching WWE or WWF at, at the time, time. Mm -hmm. because it was down to signs like this that Dwayne Johnson decided to become The Rock and say mm -hmm. goodbye to Flex Cavana or Rocky Maivi or whatever the hell he was calling himself and pretty much set himself on a path to stardom where he would absolutely destroy the world. I mean, that's one powerful sign. This was also matched by the fact that die, Rocky, kept going, die. Rocky sucks. Rocky sucks when he was trying to be a good guy. Yeah. But the reason you have to double down on the sign is because The Rock mentioned it in his promo after he had gone heel. I mean, he said, I remember the sign, I don't know why he's an old man, I remember the sign that said, die, Rocky, die. So this is just like a moment in history That's that will never be able to be undone. And I mean, it was Vince McMahon's fault. It really was. If you thought Roman Reigns was bad in like 2016, mm -hmm. go and look at Rocky Maivia in 1996 and 1997. You will laugh your ass off. Not many other wrestlers that reacted really well to signs. Make sure you let us know in the comments. And this is why I always say sometimes letting a wrestler switch up their persona helps. Because if Rock never would have went heel, we probably wouldn't have the Rock we had all those years later and we wouldn't have the the memories we have of the rock anytime we come back we always get excited that's because of how charismatic he was when he turned heel when he turned heel people legitim legitimately were booing him but they were enjoying his work he wasn't this goody two shoes anymore he was being he was an asshole and people enjoyed it and then when he finally turned face, he still kept that asshole persona. The Attitude Era was pretty much full of characters that were pretty much assholes. And it kind of worked. The only person, well, no, Kurt Angle was an asshole too. He was just like a goody two-shoe asshole. He was like a kiss ass. So it kind of worked in that time period. In the same way with Roman Reigns. Once Roman Reigns embraced his rogueness and turned into an ass, turned into a person that only cares about himself, it works. People are attracted to those individuals. I don't know what that means, says about us in society that we, we gravitate towards assholes like that, but that's just what it is, man. But comment down below. Let me know. Have you guys ever taken a sign to a wrestling show? It doesn't even have to be WWE. It can be an indie show. It can be AEW. Doesn't matter. And what did that sign say? Comment down below. Let me know. I would like to get your guys' memories on bringing signs to shows and stuff like that but i appreciate all the love and support roll to 60k appreciate y'all kicking it with me and i'll see y'all on the next one peace